Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com and in this tutorial we're going to look at playing multiple sounds in Android. So at the moment we can play one sound um, but of course I'd like to be able to play lots of sounds in my game and uh, to do that it's, it's pretty simple and if you follow the last tutorial you can probably already guess how to do it. In game at the moment I'm loading a kind of startup sound and I'm playing it as soon as it's loaded and when we load a sound we get an ID of the sound so the first step is to load all the sounds that I want to use and to get IDs back from them and the init method of my game I think is as good a place to do that as any but now I need some way of storing the IDs of these sounds and being able to refer to them later and I, the ideal thing for this would be to use a map but the only problem with a map is that if you've got a lot of sounds you don't really want to be looking things up in a map in order to play a sound because conceivably that could introduce a delay although I, I think in practice it's quite unlikely that anyone's ever going to notice a delay unless you've got a, a game with thousands of sounds in it but nevertheless let's try to do something a little bit faster than looking up a sound in a map. So what I'll do is I'll first create a let's maybe have a abstract class here. So I'll create a class called sounds and I don't want to instantiate this class so I'll make it abstract. I'll say public abstract class and this is going to be purely a place where I can hold some constants so I'm going to say public final static int start equals zero and I'm going to use these values as an index into an array where I'll store the actual IDs of each sound so this is going to be a, a kind of mnemonic to enable us to remember um, the, the kind of sound that we're looking for so let's just copy that and I'm going to have start, win, lose and bounce one and bounce two. So let's have start, win, lose, bounce one and this is going to be the sound that the ball makes when it hits a bat and bounce two. And I'm just going to set these to consecutive values and this is a little bit hacky really and we should use a map but as I say for the sake of speed I'm going to just do it this way so 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 and now in my game I'm going to have an array so let's say private private int sounds and uh, that's going to be an array of integers so let's say int array I've got a little problem with my um, typing a right hand bracket in Eclipse because it conflicts with some kind of shortcut I think. Let's say private interray sounds equals new int array and I'll make this um, I'll give this I'll make this an array of five integers and now what I can do is I can go to the point where I loaded one sound and I can load all of them so I'll, instead of saying uh, final int start sound ID here I'm going to say sounds and start so what I'm doing is I've, I've used my constant which is I started these constants numbering at zero and then going consecut consecutively and uh, actually I need to say sounds.start and I'm then using those as the index into my array and the idea is then if I want to look up a sound using for example sounds.start it's going to be very fast to go immediately to the correct ID of that sound which sample.load returns in that array rather than using a map to store the kind of name of the sound versus the ID of it which would be a tiny bit slower so I'll just copy this and we need one, two, three, four, five. And I'm going to have sounds.start and one, win, lose, 
bounce one and bounce two. And now I need to fill in the resource IDs here. So I've got r.raw.win, r.raw.lose, and bounce one and bounce two. And in this uh, load thing here, this, this init method seems as, as good a place as any to play the startup sound. So I just need to make sure that I'm looking at um, if sample ID equals um, this start sound, then I'll, I'll play it here. And to get the idea of it, I look it up in that array like that. Or I could just actually use the, um, it would make more sense really just to use the sample ID that's passed in to this um, method. So this array is just storing the sample IDs of each sample. So now I should be able to play any sound when I feel like it. And for the rest of the sounds, I'm just going to call sound.play at the right moment. And I won't worry about checking that they're loaded because it doesn't seem to give an error if it's not loaded, as far as I can see. Uh, but if you um, if you want to look into that further, um, be my guest. But I think I'm content just to call play and hope that it works because it seems to be all right. So let's copy this and I'll, um, I could put in a kind of lost sound here. So if they've lost, we'll go to case.lost. In fact, that isn't a good place to put it at all because that's the draw method. Let me get rid of that. Let's look for a sensible place to put this. So in update game, um, at this point, this just gets called once. I switch the state to lost and then it's, it's in the state lost and update game will only be called if the state's running. So this 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 seems like a good place to put to play the lost sound. Let's put it in here. And the sample ID is going to be sounds and the class name sounds dot lost dot lose. And let's put the win sound in as well. So I change the state to one here. And this is where I play the wind sound. And then the really interesting bits are the bounce sounds for when the ball hits the bat. And somewhere in here we've got some code that detects that the ball has hit the bat. And that happens in update game, I should think, if I remember rightly. Let's take a look in update game. So here we're saying that if the, um, if the ball is um, if the kind of left hand bat hits the ball then we tell the ball to start moving right and uh, I might have to if, if I find that this is going to play double sounds like this this it may be that this is called multiple times really quickly one after the other we'll check and see if that is the case and if so I need to put in a little bit of code to stop that happening but let's just try this and let's say bounce one and Similarly, here, I'm going to say play bounce two. Now let's see how that works. And I'll click run. And with a bit of luck, it'll work right out of the box. And if not, what I'm going to do is I'm going to check here and say if the ball is moving. I could do something like if, say if the ball is moving left, then make it move right and play the sound. Uh, and maybe that would ensure that I can only play one sound. But let's, rather than speculate, let's just see how it works in practice. Okay, so my, my game's running now, and I should be able to go to the screencast, and let's click Start, and it hit the bat. And that actually seems to work pretty well. It's not the best bounce sound in the world. And it has actually got a sort of bass aspect to it, but that the kind of bass aspect is sort of dwarfed by the white noise that I've added. And both the sounds actually sound different, but playing on the phone, you can't really tell. So um, I could have chosen better sounds, but uh, that's not the point here and you can see that it works. And let's just lose, and we should hear the lose sound. So I'll move the bat out of the way. 
and we go, you lost. And we put, we could play the start sound um, when you start playing again, actually. But anyway, that's enough for this tutorial. And in the next tutorial, we're going to look at changing the volume in response to the user uh, changing the volume using the button on the side of the phone, which would be quite handy rather than playing it at maximum volume all the time. So until next time, happy coding.